Welcome to the Holston Valley Unitarian Universalist Virtual Church. My name is Wayne Johnson, and I'm glad we can get together even though we cannot be together today. Today our minister, the Reverend Jeff Breer, brings us a cautionary tale about the gifts we may receive at this time of the year. I suppose you may have a Christmas tree in your home this year, or if not, perhaps some greenery to decorate. To accompany the lighting of the chalice, I have a tree blessing from Will Sanders. From forest to home, from woodlot to church, from wind to warmth. This tree and these greens are Christmas signals of health and beauty. You have been decked and ribboned in glorious colors, innocent as a small child, lovely in posture, fresh to smell, very needles like a coat of hair. The history of praise is caught up in your ever-glowing screen. May you be for us an abacus of beauty in these days. We all have different reasons for gathering here each week, but we have this much in common. We work together as a church to transform ourselves, our community, and our world by sharing love, pursuing justice, and seeking wonder. For our prelude today, Gerald Keep brings us I Have a Little Dreidel, a song associated with Hanukkah, a week-long Jewish holiday which begins December 10th. A dreidel is a small top for young children to play with during the holidays. I have a little dreidel, I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I shall play. Oh dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I will play. It has a lovely body, but legs so short and thin. And when it gets all tired, it drops and I will win. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I will play. My dreidel is so playful, it loves to dance and spin. A happy game of dreidel, come play now and begin. Oh, dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay. And when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I will play. I have a little dreidel, I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I will play. Oh dreidel, 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 I made it out of clay, and when it's dry and ready, then dreidel I will play. It has a lovely body, with legs so short and thin, and when it gets so tired, I drops and I will win. We will sing loving kindness next. Please light a candle to dispel the darkness, to honor someone or some event, or to bring light to a memory. My name is Jeff Breer and I am the minister of this virtual church. I hope you are doing well. Please remember to wear a mask in public, avoid other people, and especially avoid large indoor gatherings of people. At this time of year, of course you know that gift giving is a very popular thing to do. People agonize over the choice of a gift for their friends and relatives, and I suppose you have done as much yourself. Have you ever thought, 
Now, what can I get him that he doesn't have already? Ah, I know, a truckload of paper towels. Or have you ever thought, what can I get her that she really needs in this crazy, crazy year? Ah, I know, a gallon of hand sanitizer. Well, gift giving is fraught with angst and puzzlement. But what about receiving a gift? Gift receiving is also fraught with angst and puzzlement, and I have a story about that. A few years ago, at a mid-sized university in northeastern Tennessee, Professor Stone walked home from the university to his home on Sycamore Street, just a couple of blocks from the campus. He was late for supper, and turning the corner to his home, he noticed that all the lights in his house were on, and there were cars parked on both sides of the street. Then he remembered. It was the Christmas party. He should have been home an hour ago. Well, he entered the back door, quietly removed his shoes, hung his coat on a nail, and casually walked into the kitchen, trying to appear as if he had been at the party all along. But his wife wasn't fooled, no. She tugged the professor into the dining room and up to the dining table, on which sat a rather large and somewhat odd-looking package. Open it up, said his wife. The dean of the liberal arts college said, careful, Jim, I want those Japanese stamps. The professor looked at the package, and on the package were many beautiful stamps, Japanese stamps. Cutting them out with a penknife, he handed them to the dean. Professor Stone's daughter was impatient, to say the least. Dad, come on, open it, she said. Inside the heavy brown paper was a package wrapped in rice paper and tied up with a broad white ribbon. What a beautiful silk ribbon, his daughter said. May I have it? And the professor's wife said, be careful unwrapping that, dear. I want the rice paper. Under the rice paper, there was a beautiful lacquered box painted with many beautiful scenes. Open it, his wife said. Opening the lacquered box, the professor drew out a large roll of beautifully patterned silk. Oh, my, his wife said, how lovely. Carefully unrolling the silk, the professor found a carved ebony box. He said, this box is not the gift, but I think I know what's in it. It's tea. Our Japanese student said his father would send me some sort of his own tea, the emperor's own tea. And sure enough, he opened the box to reveal enough tea for everyone at the Christmas party. It had a rather odd fragrance about it, but no matter, it had come all the way from Japan. It's time for tea, the professor's wife said. I'll make you some emperor's tea. And she retrieved her best china, boiled the water, and put the tea in a large glass bowl so each guest could add as much of the tea to their cup as they wished. And each guest had a cup of tea. Now, if you had been a fly on the wall, you would have seen many quizzical looks and screwed up faces. The tea was horrible. The worst tea that anybody ever tasted. Even with seven sugar cubes and cream, it was undrinkable. The professor's wife looked again at the ebony box. There was something buried in the box, something hard. Digging in, she found a small, exquisitely carved ivory box. And in the ivory box, more tea. This tea, however, smelled wonderful. Oh, what a fragrance, like bergamot. So she boiled more water, washed everyone's cup, and served the tea. Now this tea tasted, well, everybody was over the moon. No one had ever tasted such good tea. Now six months earlier, in Japan, 
The student's father told the emperor about his kind professor, and the emperor agreed that a gift should be sent. So he ordered the chamberlain to deliver tea to the student's father. And the chamberlain thought, what an exquisite gift. I must put it in an exquisite box. So he took a beautiful carved ivory box from his cabinet, put tea in it, and gave it to the student's father. The student's father took the ivory box and thought, now such a gift must be protected with great care. He placed the ivory box in a beautifully decorated ebony box and filled up all the empty space around it with dried mulberry leaves. The student's mother wrapped the ebony box in yards of patterned silk, thinking, even this is not good enough for a gift of the emperor's tea. Then the student put the bundle of silk in his finest lacquered box. Handing it to his servant, he said, this is a package of the emperor's tea. Send it with great care to Professor Stone in America. Knowing how precious the gift was, the servant wrapped the lacquered box in rice paper and tied it up with his own white silk ribbon. And at the post office, the servant said to the postman, Think of it! Think of it! This is a gift of the emperor's tea for a professor in America. The postman wrapped the package with sturdy brown paper and picked his most beautiful stamps for the package. A valuable package. Inside of a package. Inside of a package full of very careful not to mistake one with the other, full of many charming things. But the essence of the gift was the emperor's tea. And so it is with the lovely wrappings that people put around the precious gem of Christmas. You must unwrap the gift yourself, and you must be careful not to mistake one for the other. So, what would you like for Christmas? The answer to that question serves very completely as a clue to the mystery of the human heart. At other times of the year we may dissemble and make believe, but at Christmas our true nature reveals itself and we act from the hidden motives that dominate our lives. So, what is it that you truly want? I want a few faithful friends who understand my loneliness and who make it less, not by what they say, but by who they are. I want a growing capacity to appreciate and respond to the sufferings of others, knowing that they fight as hard a battle against the odds as I do. Although the trail is not blazed, I want a mind unafraid to travel, and even when faith seems the most unreasonable of efforts, I want a heart willing to trust. I want a sense of duty tempered with compassion, a conception of work as a privilege, an instinct for justice tempered with mercy, and I want a feeling that responsibility is my debt for the opportunity of living in a day when great ends are at stake. I want tasks to do that have abiding value, that make my life a bit better and the world a bit brighter. I want a sense of humor, including opportunities to laugh much, often at myself. I want the grace to forgive and the humility to be forgiven, the willingness to praise, and the opportunity and capacity to respond to greatness and glory. I want a glimpse of verdant hillsides, the never-resting sea, the horizon-seeking plains, and the sound of a bird lifting my spirit higher than any bird can fly. I want a few moments of quiet amidst the raucous noises and feverish fret of the day, and when twilight descends like a benediction, I want a sense of an abiding and eternal reality whose other name 
is unknown. I regret that the Centers for Disease Control as well as the Food and Drug Administration may have become politicized. So I recommend that you consider that when you read or hear what they suggest. Nonetheless, wearing a mask, staying away from people, and avoiding large indoor gatherings is, in my opinion, a pretty good idea. And remember what Zig Ziglar said, you can have all you want in this life if you help other people get what they want. And next Sunday service, next Sunday service is the Festivals of Light. Please be ready for that and have a, candy, a candle ready at home for the service. benediction today we offer you these words from Charles Stephen. May the spirit of this season help us find our way through the noise and turmoil of the days ahead into the heart of Christmas itself to its quieter joy and its peace. May we learn that we cannot hear the songs until our heart learns to sing them. May we whose needs are so great know how close we are to what we seek and how often the things we want so desperately are ours already. May we be strong enough for the joys and the pains of love and may we with quiet persistence in our hearts learn to enjoy the small happenings of our days and hours and find in them the meaning that touches us most deeply that moves us most profoundly. May we find that life is good. Our time together is nearly finished, but our work is not done. May our spirits be renewed and our resolve strengthened as we meet the challenges of this week to come. Please help me close this service now. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts and share with all the world. My name is Ann Johnson, and I'm happy that you could join us for this service. Please come back whenever you like. We will post another virtual church service next Sunday. Please contact the minister or the caring team if you or someone you know needs help during this time. Our services are recorded in advance, so current events may move faster than our ability to address them in a timely fashion. However, you can find up-to-date information on local events, social justice issues, inspiration, and content for all ages on our Facebook page. To close our service, the group Fire in the Kitchen brings us this song, O Hanukkah. And as you make this your way through the week, remember that you are good. You are loved. We could all use some work and we're all in this together. Nothing left to say but yay church! <laughs>